Hello everybody, Grace still plays, and today I wanted to take the time and talk about beacons, discoveries, and getting the opportunity to leave a legacy behind in No Man's Sky whenever you're the first to discover something, which you most certainly will be. Consider the planet you start on will most likely have a near 0% chance of having another player start upon it, so the fear of perhaps getting to the game late after release and not being able to find something to call your own should be put at ease. In fact, that planet that you start on may have a close to 0% chance of having another person ever coming across it long after the game has been released. In that way, everything on that planet that you took the time to scan, name, and upload will be your discovery. With the internet and the gaming world as it is, we don't even have to worry about having our discoveries forgotten or never seen. Since it's possible no one may ever see that planet that you were on, then you might assume that it's possible all of your discoveries would go to waste. But there's no doubt that many people will use the internet to make videos, post GIFs, and make pictures to send to people through social media and on forums of the various things that they've seen. And that's a very alluring aspect of No Man's Sky to me. This game, which may feel like a single player experience, can still provide so much interaction between us all as a community. As players of the same game, we get to show each other our biggest discovery, the one discovery that netted us the most units, or even just a creature that we thought was the most awesome bright pink saber toothosaurus that we've seen. Of course, if that's not a concern of yours, you can simply just make discoveries for the units so that you can buy new ships and multi-tools for instance. In this E3 presentation video, Sean found four entries and showed us what a beacon looks like. These cylindrical tubes with a towering antenna looking structure that rises up into the sky. The beacon will apparently show up as a red indicator on the heads up display compass located at the top of the screen. Once there, he presses a button to upload the data, and then it mentions that four of his records were uploaded and none of them were rejected. For his troubles, he earns 6,750 units. What's particularly interesting is that small cutscene that occurs afterward, as the camera rises up into the sky and the data appears to ping various nearby points of interest on the planet. When discoveries are uploaded, they're yours. You'll be credited as having discovered them. In the video with Anthony Carboni, we had the opportunity to watch the naming system at work. In it, Anthony takes the time to name his discovery as Anthony and C. Anthony, interestingly. If you followed No Man's Sky, you probably know about discoveries, the beacons, and units gained for uploading your discoveries. But that brings me to this episode's question then. When you make your discoveries, how will you name them? Will you name them after loved ones? Will you name them after yourself? Will you name them after influential people or events? Will you try to make up your own cool space sci-fi sounding names? Or will you name it weird stuff like Destructo the Magnificent or Blasticus the Epervescent? Feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Before we head on out, the last time I asked you guys if you prefer to game with your typical run of the mill NPCs and holy cow, what a response. There were a ton of comments, sadly I can't include all of them, but at least here were some of your responses. Fuzz Nuggets preferred the addition of NPCs, saying it adds the sense of familiarity and makes a game feel more lived in, as well as possibly explaining who could have set up the various space stations and buildings. Hector Von Queef. <laughs> I want you guys to know I love you all so much, <laughs> these names. Said that... <laughs> said that... They would like some NPCs to help the game feel less lonely, but won't want them on every planet since it would take away from some of the feeling of being the first person on that planet. Charlie Black 77 brought up an excellent point, saying that some level of NPCs is necessary to make the universe feel alive, mentioning that Cold and Barren is realistic, but not so fun in his opinion. Abba Gudrath mentioned that they would definitely want NPCs but would want them to be slightly rare. And finally, our old buddy Shane O'Mac said that a moderate amount of NPCs would be okay, especially if you're going to be trading and maybe making allies with them. Just so long as you couldn't turn around without essentially being stalked by one. As always, folks, I love hearing your responses. I hope to hear more in the next video. Until then, stay foxy and much love.